types of mortgage loans that are available. You have VA loans, you have conventional loans, you have FHA loans, you have uh, uh, rural development loans. So um, tell us a little bit about each of those. We'll start with FHA. What type of loan is that and uh, and who does that benefit? FHA loans would, in my opinion, would help someone who may have had some credit challenges or things like that um, because there's not as much red tape and overlays on those types of loans for someone who doesn't have a whole lot of down payment. Um, So it helps them basically get into a home if they've had some credit challenges in the past with as little as three and a half percent down. Um, If they haven't had any credit challenges in the past, it can also help them with just having a lower um, down payment to be able to get into a home versus um, conventional, which often sometimes if you're over certain income qualifications, you don't qualify for their um, 3% down payment programs that they have. You may have to come up with five or more. Just depends on each individual's um, really what they're wanting to achieve. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, and and it's good to know that there are options out there. I mean, things happen in life. People people might go through a struggle, like a, a flood, for example, that may have wreak havoc on their credit for a little while, and and uh, and it was something that wasn't even necessarily their fault. So it's good to know that they have loans for people maybe that had a tough situation that had an effect on their credit. People go through divorces, which cause uh, you know in some cases uh, credit issues that that uh, may or may not be directly related to them. So it's good to know that that loan's out there. Uh, Let's talk about VA loans for a little while. So um, VA, obviously, most people are going to tie that right into the military. I know it's a military loan, but what are some advantages for military guys and gals that uh, may be looking to get home finance? Well, a VA loan, just depending on uh, the individual's certificate of eligibility, it can qualify for a a veteran um, or a spouse of a, a, su- a surviving spouse for a veteran, uh, basically. And you can get 100% financing um, depending on that certificate of eligibility. They may qualify for um, an exemption of the upfront funding fee um, or if they have to pay the upfront funding mortgage funding fee, they roll that into your loan amount to where you're still getting 100% um, financing but you don't have any monthly mortgage insurance. So when I say mortgage insurance, that's not homeowners. I have a lot of people that get that confused, um, especially um, someone that may be a first time home buyer, someone that's just looking into mortgages. Um, But basically what that is, is any type of loan that you put less than 20% down, um, unless you choose an option of doing upfront mortgage insurance premium um, paid at once, you have to pay a monthly mortgage insurance premium until you have at least 20% equity in your home. With a VA loan, you will never have that monthly mortgage insurance amount. So basically, a veteran or someone who qualifies for a VA loan could basically get more bang for their buck as far as qualifying um, because they don't have that extra expense added to their monthly note for mortgage insurance. Gotcha. And that's a that's a big deal. And for these, you know, these uh, graduating seniors that maybe they they don't want to jump right into college, but they want to serve their country. There's another another uh, option uh, and reason to to join the military uh, is is to take advantage of these type of loans. It's almost like an incentive, you know, from maybe from the government. You know, you serve your country and we're going to offer you this as a as a trade off. And I do know some guys that got into the military right out of high school. And if it wasn't for doing that, they wouldn't have been able to get it home. So it's a good program. Now, rural development. Here's one. I have no idea what this is. What is a rural development uh, loan? A rural development loan is basically a, it's an RD loan. Um, and it basically gives you 100% financing um where you don't you can borrow basically up to a hundred percent of not only the sales price but of the appraised value so say you have someone that's looking at purchasing a home and it comes in appraised for a few thousand dollars more than what it uh 
what it's selling for and the seller didn't necessarily agree to pay all of the closing costs. So you can actually purchase the home for the sales price amount and actually roll in some of your closing costs as long as it appraises for a little bit more and not have to worry about the extra money out of pocket. So that way you're getting really 100% financing. Wow. So that's just an um, an option on the table there. Um, most oftentimes we do have sellers that cooperate, especially if they know someone is doing an RD loan and assist with the closing cost. Um, but a lot of times, especially now, since a lot of areas were rezoned, I've had customers that fell short with that as far as what the seller could contribute and the house did come in appraised for a little bit more and they ran into issues where they were a little short of funds for closing because it needed flood insurance and some of those premiums can be quite hefty so it allowed them to be able to roll in some of that extra money that they didn't necessarily have set aside um, or in their account to be able to take care of the, that extra expense that they weren't expecting. That's interesting. And in in this area, especially Livingston Parish, you know, the, there's a lot of homes, especially now, that uh, have to carry flood insurance. So that's that's a, a good point that you bring up uh, there with the financing. So a conventional loan, is that just a standard straight up loan you put I don't know what's the percentage typically that you would put down on a conventional loan. Um, for a first-time home buyer, conventional, just depending, and there's income limitations. And I want to go back to RD. There's also income limitations for that mm-hmm. um, type of loan, so you just have to be weary um, of of that. So there's different. And when you say limitations, you mean you cannot make over a certain over amount. Over a certain I amount, see. if okay. it's a family of one to three. Versus a family that is five or more, um, so you gotcha. get a little bit more more house um, that you could qualify um, more income for you qualifying. Gotcha. Um, so, in regards to the conventional, you, there's same thing with that. Um, if you're a first time home buyer, you can get away with as little as three percent down, but there are income limitations on some. Um, And then on one, there is, as long as you've never owned a home before, those income limitations may not uh, qualify. I mean, uh, yeah, will affect you. Um, And then most do the 5% down. I have a lot of agents recently that didn't even know anything about the 3% down. Um, So where the conventional loan can be really, really helpful, and you kind of touched on this earlier, a lot of people go through a lot of different changes in life. Um, Louisiana is a community property state. So say you have um, a couple that may be going through a divorce and they need to buy a home, but they have a home together and they're waiting on it to sell or whichever. All your government loans are going to require for us to pull both spouses' credit. Um, and you have to qualify whether the other spouse is on the loan or not. You have to qualify with both spouses' debt. Whereas if you go conventional, they have to take into consideration that you're married, but conventional doesn't look at your spouse's debts like a government loan would. Gotcha. So that makes it sense. may, if someone, you know, makes a, a good amount of money and they could qualify with both until everything gets worked out. This often helps them be able to um, purchase or say they've never bought a home before, but they were married. This allows them to be able to purchase a home and not have to have those extra layers that the governmental loans might have for them to keep them from being able to qualify. 